The 20th anniversary of the charter school movement is a great time to step back and look at where we've come from, and where we are now, and you know where we're on the way to, to going. And I think what we find is that the charter school movement has turned out to have a far broader impact on the public education system than people first uh, believed. I mean, it was, it was a phenomenal bill. It was a phenomenal legislative um, uh, development that the charter school bill passed. And there was some language in there, some legislative intent uh, about improving pupil learning. Uh, empowering educators to make a difference, innovating new solutions. But no one really knew what it was going to turn out to be. What has happened over time is that we've seen that very large numbers of schools have opened. We have uh, 982 charter schools in the state of California. We have over 400,000 students attending those schools. We're standing today at San Carlos Learning Center, the first school, which when it opened became a proof point. When people came to visit it and realized the possible, left and made their own schools. I think if we're going to talk about some of the accomplishments that the charter school movement should be proudest of. Number one, I think, should be simply the, the degree to which the public has embraced the charter school movement. We're now 20 years into it, and by our polling, two-thirds of likely voters report themselves as knowing something or a lot about charter schools. And the way they've learned about charter schools is through the word-of-mouth communication that has happened from teachers and parents serving those 400,000 kids. And we've seen that the public over, has overwhelming support for charter schools as well, that support having grown in the electorate by about 20 percentage points as well. That's one thing just how the state, how parents, how communities have embraced the charter school movement. The second thing, equally as important, is the fact that we have charter schools that are demonstrating that what was thought to be an unbreakable link between poverty and low performance is in fact very breakable. While charter schools are str um, struggling in some areas, and where we're not saying that every school is excelling academically, if we looked at across the entire portfolio, the link between low performance and poverty is one-fourth as strong within a charter school in California as it is within the traditional system. So those are two very big accomplishments that we should certainly have front and center. If I was to talk about perhaps the last area, this is where I would say how the charter school movement, uh, how the charter school landscape is known now as the most hospitable environment to drive whatever reform of public education you are passionate about. Think about all the areas where charter schools have been able to innovate new solutions. Think about, for example, school buildings. We have had traditional school buildings built historically for $100,000 per student or more. We've seen a very large number of charter schools for, um, that, that are building charter schools at $20,000 or less. Where would we have possibly been able to see at a society the possibility for generating smaller, build, or smaller cost buildings were it not for the charter school movement? Let's look at collective bargaining arrangements. We've known for a very long time that the five, six, seven hundred page collective bargaining arrangements are not workable in the long term. Where in the environment has the new idea for thin contracts emerged? From dynamite charter schools like Camino Nuevo and Green Dot, which came up with the 15, 16, 17 page um, thin contracts that now um, are, are being talked about across the country. Look at how teachers are being prepared. Where would we have expected, for example, a, gra a brand new teacher credentialing approach where people are credentialed with, um, it, and take classes within the very schools that um, are, are using the, the instructional approaches? Um, that are most wanted. We see that happening at, at High Tech High, where they've been the first to credential their own teachers and where they've now gone on to open up their own graduate school of education. You name it, whatever it is, whether it's voc ed, whether it's about special ed, whether it's about the use of technology in the classroom, or the three things I've already talked about, I think there's a broad recognition that if you want the freedom, the flexibility, and the accountability to drive something new and bold within public education, the best place to do it is within a charter school context.